Welcome, welcome. Dr. Stephen Hobbs here from the Wealth Movement. This is hole number two of possibly five, folks. And uh, I, you'll notice I said hole two, so I didn't use part two because I think that what Indra and I are talking about more from her experience is we're talking about the whole. We're not talking about just a part. So I'm going to play with some words myself today, and I'm going to call this whole two of five holes. There you go. Let's have <laughs> some fun with that, okay? <laughs> so one of the things that we were chatting about on the first one, and I thought was really great because Indra is one of these people, as, as you know, a wealther who's someone I believe that has something to share with the world about being for the world, whether it's about life or it's about business. And I believe that they have some really important things to share. And in the first video, um, raw was one of the words. And I think that there's some raw elements to what Indra is sharing with us. And at the end of the first one was, she said, Creativity and alchemy. And I went, oh, okay, those are the words you want to share, close off. I said, no, 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 no. We've got to come back and explore those in a little bit more detail. So I, I'd i like to start there, if that's okay, Indra. Is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so absolutely. we have creativity and we have alchemy. Where would you like to unpack that? How would you like to get started with I'm going to put the two words in there together. Where would you like to go with that? In the pot. <laughs> in the pot, okay. <laughs> the pot at the end of the rainbow. That's how I see it. <laughs> very good, very good. Creativity, yeah. Creativity is, to me, individuality. So when we all allow ourselves just to open up to our own creative space and our creative energy, because we're all so different, it's it's... It's an amazing world, you know, to see everybody just do their own thing, their own creation. And, you know, I can make flower essences. I make them great. I'm sure the next person can do it just as well with their own individuality, you know. And I think in life, there are too many people saying, I can't do, I can't do, I can't do, and not giving themselves the chance to do. It's about really, it's, and it's what I do with my groups in Silent Moon is to get people to see their authenticity so that they can do and they realize what they are, and I don't like this term, good at, you know, but I'm going to use it for the sake of humanity. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, you know, they want to see what they're good at, you know. Um, this weekend I went out into Lake Windermere in the UK and I swam at 7.5 degrees centigrade, which is 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And I swam in a lake. And to me, that was a dream of mine. But that was me being creative. That was me doing something spontaneously and creative and allowing myself to grow from that. Now, it doesn't look creative, I guess, to some people, because a lot of people think creativity is about drawing, about writing. But creativity comes in many forms. And that's where I think alchemy, the alchemist comes in as well, because alchemy is about finding your gold. It's about you know, drawing that out of you, you know, cr creating your own gold in life. What is your gold? Finding your gold within you. And, you know, I'm not really a traditional, I don't, I'm doing this today, <laughs> traditional creator, but I know I'm very creative. So it's, those words come together for me. So the alchemist element, do you believe that all of us are alchemists as well? In our own individual way, yes, I do believe that we can all bring our own gold, and I'm seeing it as gold all the time, to, our, to this life, to this world, you know? And I'm not sure that we all get there in this lifetime, but, but we have it within us, you know? We all have it within us to be able to do that, you know? We all have a sixth sense, we all have the ability to, to work with nature to channel with nature to grow with nature and it's just allowing ourselves to do that and we don't all allow that and maybe that's because we don't want it or we can't see it but it's there within us all because what we're talking about here is leaning into uh the work that i'm going to be doing more of around children and trees mm. and it's about helping grandparents and parents to be able to bring their 
children and grandchildren and make more of a connection with nature. So I th would you agree or disagree that if the parents and grandparents help the little ones to understand more about their connection with nature, mm -hmm. then they could, the children could actually mentor their grandparents and parents about what it might be to be an alchemist. Is there a yeah. possibility there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, children are our teachers, right? Yeah. I've, that's, you know, my kids are my greatest teachers. Definitely. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, because as children, the, we, we don't have as much conditioning laid on us. <laughs> yeah. So we have the ability to be open to what is. As, as the younger we are, the much, you know, the more open we are. So... And that would lean into, I think you used the word sixth sense just a, a minute or so ago. So does that lean into sixth sense intuition? And we're talking about young ones being, you know, they could be quite intuitive to what's going on. And I, yeah. I always affectionately say, you know, they can actually see the unicorns. Yeah, no, I agree. I think they can. No. So what about intuition? How does that fit into what it is you do in your life? Well, as I guess through channeling and you know, allowing the intuition just to go to, to be there through, um, through the flow of life. It was easy for me to say through the flow of life. And I think the more you allow the flow to, to grow, the flow grows and the intuition comes and, you know, get out of your own way. And when you get out of your own way, your intuition is there. And I think that's a lot of the time what, why people sort of say, Oh, well, I don't have intuition. I don't have a sixth sense. It's, it's mainly because we just, we're in our own way, you know, and when we get out of our own way, then we are so open to what is. And there's many ways of being able to do that, you know, whether you do that through walking in the woods, through meditating, through yoga, but there's ways to grow your intuition to get out of your, get out of your own way. Yes. Well, one of the ways I do it is I do lots of walking and, mm. and I, I live a life of house sitting, dog sitting, cat sitting now. <laughs> Probably I won't take the cat necessary for the walk unless I put it in the pack or something like that. But dog walking gets me out to, you know, twice a day and I'm always out in nature. And that's a really great way for me to make my connections. Mm. And to, I just wrote an article about the sentinels of the forest, about wow. two trees would you pass by that gives you an access within. And it's within the forest, but also within yourself, because you realize you've just passed your two sentinels. And uh, so I'm forever doing that piece of it. So this, this intuition now, because you're a yoga uh, instructor and uh, weave it into your own life, and you just mentioned, I'm thinking that meditation is a really great way to enhance your uh, intuitiveness, um, your creativity, um, probably your alchemy. So I'm, I'm just running a thread here, but let's just go back to meditation. How, what is meditation in your life and how might you suggest others to, uh, to get involved with it? Oh, meditation has been part of my life for now about 30 years. And I, honestly, through having, um, bouts of mental illness through being young, when I was younger and being low and depressed, one of the things that I did, and I always said, if I, if I get through this, I'll teach, I'll teach yoga and I'll teach meditation, which is what happened because meditation was the thing that got me through it. And when I meditate, I, and when I teach meditation, I get people to find the spaces within them and the spaces bet between their thoughts and the spaces between the sounds. So I work very strongly with the spaces within us and, you know, outside of us, because it's very difficult unless you live in a cave or up a mountain somewhere to be away from sound. I mean, we, we don't need to be in total quiet to meditate. In fact, it's good not to be because then we grow as we, you know, we grow in ourselves. So if we, we can work with sound, and we can allow ourselves just to be present with the sounds around us and then find the spaces between the sounds, which is what I like to do, then that can help um, our everyday life. So it also helps my intuition to grow by working like that. Again, and I go back to the flow. If I work within the spaces, I flow more. <laughs> yeah, and that's a great phrasing 
in the spaces between. Yeah. I like that imagery because some of that I've woven into my own work with working with groups and organizations going through mergers and acquisitions mm. and, um, you know, looking at the space. But the way that you just said it, I, I immediately just went whoosh. I, I went in there and uh, that's, a, that's a beautiful place to be. So um, thank you for that. You know, that's that's, good. That's, that's really... Sometimes for many people, though, they will say, especially if they're suffering from a, a, a very chatty mind. I don't have any space, but we all, if you, if you, if I say don't think about it, but if you think about it, we all have space between each thought. There's that tiniest gap there between each thought before the next one comes in. And it's about growing those spaces. Right. So does the, the, the work with the flowers and the essences I'm thinking that that must lead into finding some of that space, finding a way in which to be a, a meditation. Yeah. I think it'd be great to just share a little bit more about how you connect flowers to what it is we're, we're talking about. Can you, can you just give us a little bit of something there? Yeah, because, well, the flowers are my life, are my daily life. So especially from this time of year to the end of summer. So this is my sort of busiest time. So I'm, constantly looking around communing with the flowers when I go out you know and connecting with what I need to create and the flowers actually talk to me so that's when I know what I have to create that year um so it's basically the power of the flower <laughs> and that's and that's what I call it because I sit and channel and and now I don't even have to be in a state of you know like a yogi just sat there meditating I don't even have to do that I just have to sort of look at the flower and sit, just sit for a moment. And then I get my pen and paper and I just, I write, it just comes through me. And it's, and really it's because I got out my own way. If I'm in my own way, I cannot make a flower essence. There is just no way. Cause you just get me in a bottle and who wants that? <laughs> That's an interesting perspective. Okay. I get that. Thank you. <laughs> but it's true. If you get, if, if you're there and all your stuff's there, you're just going to get the energy of, of, of somebody else's stuff. So that's how it works. You know, it's energetic. It, it comes through me as a vessel and I don't see myself really as anything but the vessel that the flower channels through me. And then it's like from seed to bottle, it comes through me and then it goes into the bottle. Um, it's the flower that's in there. Right. But if there's, if my, if I'm messy, then I can't, you know, and I do get wonderfully messy <laughs> and I acknowledge that. So, but I, cause I'm human, but I don't create when I'm in that space because that wouldn't be fair on everybody who buys my essences. <laughs> right. Right. Well, one of the interesting things is there are words in, in, in my world that end in ER or OR like leader manager. And I'm thinking flower is sort of a descriptor of something that's a flower, but it's really about flow or yeah and it's about flow flower is giving you the essence of the flow i'm going out on a limb on my tree right now but what what are you going to say about that is there anything there that sort of tickles you gosh i never thought of it like that that's amazing i'm you know i love the way that you play with words you're a wordsmith aren't you really i is play that yeah <laughs> that's what I that's what I do do yeah I do do that yeah I, I, I flow with it all so flow -er. yeah the flower makes me flow -er. <laughs> yeah. I love and it. Right. I, yeah and I, and I just that's what struck me as well oh that's kind of a neat way of, of, of looking at it and, and, and doing it so and I hadn't seen that before until we were starting to talk right so I don't know if we're gonna. I'm gonna be able to do tree or so. I'll have to probably find <laughs> some, some way to play with that a little bit later, and we'll we'll see how it goes. All right. So the the essence of that flower that you bring in that gives you a sense of flow that you can use in. Uh, again, I'm gonna go back to this uh, intuition and meditation, weaving it uh, again together. What is it about the flower that you want to share with us to sort of close off that is so important even if it's just to be out in the flowers 
But what is it about the flower, the essence of the flower, that is important to our life right now? But the healing benefits of what they offer, you know, every one of them has a healing benefit. Every, every one of them has a property to support us in some way, shape or form. And nature, all of nature does that. You know, if we walk out in nature, you know, we know herbalists and people who work naturopaths, all those people who work with plants, you know, to the shamans and, and, there's so much proof out there that the flowers and the plants and the weeds and, you know, the trees all work, whether we choose to take them or whether we just choose to be in them, you know, by going out into the forest, how much better you feel, you know, for, for being amongst the trees. Yeah. So in my eyes, it's, it's just about honoring that place of healing, you know, because nature has it all for us. There's no, there's no coincidence that it heals us, you know? It's everything is out there for us for sure and yeah. then the flowers as well as i'm in the mountains at the moment and there's not a lot of flowers out at this point in time um if i was back in uh, the city where i where i live which is calgary the crocuses yeah. would be coming out of the the side of the hills and the purple yeah. crocuses would be and some of them are blue but right now i'm not seeing a lot of flowers i'm kind of missing that out there so uh, I, I appreciate what you're saying. It has an effect on our lives. And when we, like in England, we all know that when, as you'll know, when the, the daffodils come out, bang, everything goes yellow. It's the first flower of real color in the UK when, when spring comes. And everybody feels lighter because, ah, oh, the daffodils are here, spring's here. Um, and they just have that effect on our minds, you know, when we see them. When we see a flower, <gasps> Flowers do that to us, you know, they're, they're beautiful. So yes. it's um, that in itself, just looking at them is healing, you know, that heals the mind, it heals the, the body, it heals just by, we, they heal us just by looking at them. Why yeah. do we like this in our house? <laughs> well, that, that, that's the imagery that just came up, you know. I have a friend and she's always got some flowers in a vase, vase in her, uh, in her kitchen. And, and I just, that's kind of, that's kind of neat. She, she wants that essence <laughs> in her yeah. life and around her uh, at the time. And uh, I think that's beautiful. So yeah, me too. I think me too. what we'll do is I, that's getting to closing down for this uh, mm -hmm. whole two of uh, the many that we're, we're going to share. So I think what we'll do is we'll set ourselves up for uh, the next one. And um, we'll go exploring and see where we end up. So again, thank you. It, it's oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I think the the words there was creativity, alchemist, uh, intuition, meditation, and flowers, and we wove a little story together today. So uh, yeah. thank you for that.